graduate program in business and a graduate program in computer in applied computing, right? Uh, many times people say, "How can you fit these two group put these two groups together?" I always say, "Well, applied computing can only be applied if we understand the needs of the users of computing, right? And uh, well, the at least um, among everyone in the world is a user of computers these days. In fact, we carry a computer in our pockets or smartphone, uh, but the ones that really pay for it are the business people, right? They are the ones that are interested in information systems that can be used to improve the way uh, they commercialize their products, to even to the way that they develop or produce, manufacture their products. Uh, so it's, it's, I find it interesting to have these two groups together. I, uh, I am a professor at both programs. Um, I'm uh, originally I'm an electronics engineer, but that was 30 years ago. Please be very welcome. Um, uh, I think for the last 20 years I have, an, uh, and after that I've been teaching at the the informatics department of UT, uh, at UTFPR for also about 30 years, uh, but I haven't written a code uh, for the last 20 years. So I. I'm at the, the informatics department because I was already there, I would say. Uh, my master's and my, my doctorate degrees are in business. Of course, it was always focused on information systems. So, uh, but uh, in, in information systems and, and, and information technology became the object of my study more than the objective of my study, if you understand it. I, I look at, uh, at computer science and I look at uh, the way we, we, we use computers in organizations and in our society uh, and uh, but, but I, 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 I'm sort of the like the fly on the wall I, I'm not in directly involved any longer right so my students sometimes get very excited in the first day of class and ask uh, if, if they are mainly many of the undergrads in, in computer in, in, in information systems here they say what are we going to code this semester prof and I say nothing we're only going to talk about uh, what we do when, when we are coding and we will discuss why we do that so I will try and, and, and reach to several different uh, topics or fields of, of research that involve uh, you know areas such as psychology uh, such as sociology you know, psych psychology and sociology are always very important for people who develop technology because the users of those technologies are either individuals, psychologists are the guys that try to understand us as individuals, or groups of people like companies, organizations, and sociologists are, let's say, the, the researchers that try to understand how we act, how we perform as groups, as uh, in Portuguese we, 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 we would say uh, as patotas, right? Uh, even inside organizations sometimes if we, if we think like an engineer, you'll see, uh, you, you'll say, I don't understand why there is so much competition among departments within the same company. Well, ask a sociologist and he will tell you, or he or she will tell you. Uh, it's simply because we are all trying to uh, figure out what our space is and make sure that we have a space and that we are relevant uh, there. So we will be discussing uh, things like, you know, that there will be concepts brought from sociologists, from psychologists, from philosophers. Uh, I, I think that we should bring philosophers into our discussions uh, a lot now that we have finally gotten to artificial intelligence. That to, to, I mean, artificial intelligence has been discussed at least for 50 years, but now we got to artificial intelligence that scares us in the sense that we say, gee, this, this technology is, is smarter than me, right? So. Philosophy has to be brought into our discussion of technology because philosophers were the ones that were always discussing the, the, the reasons, the meaning, the, 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 the reasons for, for us to, to, to be what we are, to do what we do, right? Uh, philosophers ask the broad questions. And now we may even get to, to some broad questions like, I don't know, maybe we could start thinking. I, I'm, I'm going to be very, uh, I would say, I may burn in hell for this, but uh, we may even start thinking God may be smaller than humans, smaller in the sense that 
God may be less intelligent than humans. We humans developed something that is more intelligent than, than us. So, I mean, maybe our gods or whoever created us, I mean, we, uh, I don't know if you, probably everyone has uh, at, at some stage heard uh, of um, someone saying that we are uh, an experiment, a high school um, student experiment that was abandoned, right? Uh, for, for some other, for a, a, another being uh, from a different galaxy or whatever. They said, well, let's abandon them because it went wrong. Or, or it went well, but I, I've already got my grade here, so don't, don't, don't need to bother about that any longer. But the philosophers here are always trying to, to understand this uh, ab abandoned study or experiments. Or, and now we have this other possibility of thinking, gee, if we create a form of intelligence that is uh, more powerful than ours, that means that in the future, this power of uh, uh, this intelligence may be around. We may not be around any longer, either because we we didn't survive our own stupidity. It's not only about collective intelligence. This is also going to be about collective stupidity, right? Either because we, we didn't uh, survive our stupidity, or because this more intelligent being that we created decided that now we are irrelevant. That could also be the case, right? I mean. Uh, we all know that Asimov had those three rules for robots and said that uh, a robot should never kill a human. Uh, but uh, I don't know, you know, I, I mean, well, that, uh, we don't know if that was coded. In, in fact, we don't know that we, if we code that. And if we, even if we code that, we don't know if there isn't a, a way of uh, our robots or our the artificial in intelligence that we generate to go around and say, okay, we're not killing them. We're just allowing them to not live this stupid life that they live. So, I don't know. Anyway, so notice that philosophers will have to, to be brought into discussing technology because technology has been for uh, very long an area where only engineers worked. And when I refer to engineers here, I'm talking to people that develop stuff, create stuff, right? Uh, not necessarily someone with a degree in engineering, but someone who create stuff. Uh, and those that create stuff usually create stuff to solve a specific problem. So engineers in general work as uh, patch makers. They, they, they do patchwork. Do you know what patchwork is? Uh, uh, well, if you look on the internet, you will see there is uh, a lot of people that, that uh, well, live their lives building patchwork and, and patchwork like to, to make a, uh, almost as if it, if it were art or, or for just to make things beautiful, but it's little pieces that are sewed together to make something larger. Engineers, in general, in general what they do is they start with a little problem and then they patch that little problem with, or the solution to that little problem to the solution that someone else uh, gave to, to another little problem to another solution. But engineers usually hardly ever have uh, an understanding of the big picture, right? They don't see the whole work. So when we discuss collective intelligence, sometimes we will be talking about this possibility of seeing the whole thing, right? Uh, the, uh, when, we, when we think of the collective intelligence as a way of, uh, of uh, making sense of the efforts and the the work of each individual that is part of that collective. Sometimes it's going to be this, uh, it's uh, collective intelligence is going to be uh, the understanding of the whole. Other times we will be talking about collective intelligence uh, the way engineers do, uh, divide to conquer. Uh, if the, the problem is, is too big, I find something smaller and I work on that. But then divide to conquer and, and aggregate again afterwards. So sometimes it's going to be the aggregation of, uh, of, um, of the small uh, efforts of, of, of each one. Uh, and, and the fact that sometimes we, we use collective intelligence to think about the big picture, and then from the big picture think small actions. And other times we think of small actions 
and think, well, how can we connect these small actions and turn that, that in, into a big thing, makes collective intelligence really broad. So we have uh, researchers uh, studying uh, collective intelligence from different fields. Of course, the philosophers are there. Uh, we will see, for example, one of our main uh, um, the, the, one of the main voices in collective intelligence uh, was or is Pierre Lévy, uh, this French philosopher who wrote uh, several books, in fact, one of them with the title Collective Intelligence, but several books that deal with uh, collective intelligence in the 90s. Uh, and, and I would say that most of the discussion that we have about collective intelligence is still a little romantic because we're still very inspired by philosophers like Pierre Lévy, who were optimistic uh, about the possibilities of collective intelligence and who wrote uh, as far back as in the, in the, the early 90s uh, about the topic. Of course, nobody talked about fake news in the, in the early 90s, right? So uh, Pierre Lévy had uh, more reasons to be enthusiastic back then than he would if he was writing about that right now, uh, for example. Fake news, by the way, is uh, uh, a topic that should interest people who are thinking of collective intelligence, when we think of collective intelligence uh, in a broad way. Right? Uh, and why is that so? Because if we, if we, if we think of a, very, uh, I will think of a definition of collective intelligence here that is going to be very broad, and then we'll see if, if uh, fake news fit there. Um, we could think of collective intelligence as being the means to collectively reach an end. In that sense, we would be talking about collective intelligence as uh, tools to generate a result that with we we think that is interesting, and when I say we, this we may not necessarily be a we, it may be just one person, right? Uh, so, uh, you'll see how, how, how this splits into little parts because uh, the collective intelligence may be a means to reach a result, but that result may not necessarily be a collective in, uh, collectively intended result. Uh, for example, uh, when a company uses crowdsourcing, are you familiar with that term, C crowdsourcing, when, when you try to get others uh, outside the company to do things for the company, and when a company develops a program for crowdsourcing, uh, it wants to use the collective intelligence so as a resource to reach a result that is interesting to that company. So that company will benefit from crowdsourcing, right? Uh, we usually do not use the term crowdsourcing to refer to uh, like more social projects. Although sometimes you'll see the literature uh, uh, has still not been, I mean, we still have to work a lot on the, t on, on, on the terminology that we use uh, to make sure that, uh, that we are all talking about the same thing, right? Uh, but for example, there are authors that say crowds crowdsourcing is not collective intelligence because in their mindset, collective intelligence has to be uh, means used to, to achieve a collective intent, something that is good for, 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 for a large group of uh, uh, humans and not necessarily for one single person or, or entity. But that's a narrow, narrow vision of collective intelligence. We, we want to, in this, at least in this course here, we will talk about all the possibilities of using either collective resources, not, I'm, uh, and now I'm not even talking about collective intelligence in the way of, in, in the sense of only, you know, people's minds. Collective resources, it could be our muscles to build things. For example, if we use this broad uh, definition, uh, the pyramids in Egypt would be the result of the use of collective intelligence. Notice the intent was the only one who wanted uh, the pyramid was the, I don't know how to say that in English, the pharaoh, uh, the, the king who wanted to be uh, buried, come on in, 
and, and, and be, uh, below that beautiful architecture, let's say. Um, but everyone else, all those, all those brick workers who, who, who had to not only, well, shape the bricks, uh, stone bricks, uh, carry them uh, a long way and, and put them on, a, on, 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 on uh, one on top of the other so that they formed that pyramid, they were all part of this collective intelligence uh, used as, uh, you know, using uh, people's energy, in this case their muscles more than their brains, to build something that was one only person's intent. So we have that possibility and we also have uh, a different possibility, for example, if we think of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is also each one of us as an individual bringing a little brick of knowledge into this, um, let's say, platform. Uh, but we're building something that is uh, that we all believe that is good for humanity or for, or for a lot of people. Uh, and, and we're not working with our muscles, we're working with our brains, even if in, in, in small tasks. Right? So that's no, notice how, how different things are. Uh, in crowdsourcing as being dividing, dividing the, 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 the work that needs to be done in several small parts, and, 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 and then uh, coordinating the efforts of all those people to make sure that a specific result is obtained, uh, that being one possibility. There's another crowdsourcing possibility that is uh, uh, not, not dividing the whole into small, small pieces, but even we also refer to crowdsourcing when we're talking about, for example, open innovation. We, in, the, in our organizations, I mean, we have our research and, and development uh, uh, departments uh, that, uh, that are the ones that, de that, that try to innovate and create new products but they're sort of stuck with uh, their own ideas because they're all people from the same field that discuss things only among themselves. They cannot think out of the box. Collective intelligence in the sense of allowing uh, an organization to reach out to, to other, um, let's say, to other sources of intelligence allows this, this company to get fresher ideas from people who do not know anything about their business. I remember when I, I was a kid, my father used to, to tell this as a joke to us, but it, it, it's, a, it's a good example of uh, a way where you can uh, open, uh, you, you get open innovation, you get innovation from outside the, you know, your uh, area of expertise. Uh, he, he told us that uh, once a, a, a truck got stuck under a bridge, and then they were calling all these engineers to decide what they were going to do, of course, it was a concrete bridge. Then they were discussing they couldn't just uh, try and elevate the bridge. So that, uh, and, and they were already discussing if they were going to explode the bridge. And then one kid came there and said, why don't you just flatten the tires of the, of the truck? Right? They, uh, that's the kind of a situation in which someone who's thinking out of the box. If, if you bring a, a, an ex, a, a demolition engineer, he, can only, he or she can only think of exploding things. right? If you bring, uh, uh, you know, so it depends on the, 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 the view that you bring to s try and solve a problem. So open innovation uh, is, in fact, I would say, at least under our very large umbrella of uh, definitions and uses of collective intelligence, open innovation is part of it. Uh, one of, uh, um, one of our, our uh, authors here that we'll discuss when when we discuss uh, open innovation, um, uh, Henry Chesbro, uh, a professor in Berkeley, uh, he, he was the guy, I, I believe that he was the guy who coined the term open innovation in the early 2000s, I think 2000, 2003, 2004. And well, he became very famous for his ideas of, uh, on, on open innovation. Uh, and at least from my very humble uh, perspective, at one stage, he himself got stuck with his own idea of what that could be. Uh, in 2017, I was thinking about doing a postdoc in the US, and uh, I was already in very interested in collective intelligence. 
And I thought, well, this guy may be a guy that I could connect to uh, and we could develop some, some uh, research trying to bring these two uh, areas of study together, right? Trying to bring open innovation and collective intelligence and, and see uh, um, how we could, let's say, make a match of those two fields of study. Uh, well, of course, he was a Berkeley professor. I was a professor of a, for them, an absolutely unknown uh, university in Brazil. Uh, he, I don't even know if he bothered uh, looking if I had research on that topic, but even if he, if he had, he wouldn't be impressed because we, we, uh, one, the challenges that we have, we have the barrier of language, so it's, it's much more difficult for me to write um, uh, a scientific paper and have it published in the same journals where, let's say, the North Americans and, and the anglo saxon and, 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 and the British, uh, where they publish their papers. So most of my papers were published in Portuguese or here in, in, in Latin America. So I don't, but I, I really don't think that he even bothered. He looked at another guy asking to come and, and do something with me, but, he, said, he, but he, he, he spared the time to send me an email back and say, look, uh, I don't think that open innovation and collective intelligence uh, relate to a no, one to, a, to, to the other to an extent that deserves uh, me to, to, to spend my time discussing that. In that period, and, and, and there I noticed that I had a no, he was not inviting me to his lab, uh, which was okay. In fact, I had the opportunity of later going there and, and talking to him uh, uh, personally, because I went to, 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 to Berkeley, but to a, to a different department, uh, and uh, my strategy ended up being, well, instead of proposing that as a research project, I proposed collective intelligence as a way of advertising the, the, their, own, uh, their, their own research. So instead of talking to a researcher there, I talked to, to this guy who was uh, the, the, the manager of a, a program that, that received all the PhDs uh, and uh, PhD students and postdoc, um, uh, uh, postdocs and visiting scholars or whoever went to, to Berkeley and said, I, I told him, you have so much intelligence there. Why don't you try to gather that and uh, and, and build on build on that? And we started a very hum very, very little project with uh, with them that we still uh, do, which is uh, trying to to spread the discussion of uh, well the, the the startup concepts of the Silicon Valley and their area uh, discussed by people. From, from that area specifically. And we, what we did is a series of uh, YouTube videos and, and, and in which there's a, but that, that was a different way of getting to, 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 to Berkeley because at that stage I, I just wanted to be back to, the, to that part of the world, let's say, uh, uh, for, for my own uh, research. But anyway, well, what I was going to say, I, 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 I realized that I went in several different directions here, but what, what I want to, to tell you is uh, I'll be very happy if by the end of this course, and by that I mean by the 26th of May, if I'm not mistaken, um, we all have an understanding of what collective intelligence is. Uh, from this broad perspective, we'll be seeing you know, the optimistic ideas, we'll be reading about the optimistic ideas of uh, people like Pierre Lévy in the, in the 90s. We will be discussing how the MIT people were much more pragmatic, uh, try to still in a very optimistic uh, way uh, develop collective intelligence over the last 20 years. And when I say that they're optimistic, uh, it is because the, the, the MIT people have that vision, of course, of the technology will solve all, all our problems. Okay? That's one of the problems that I tell our students here also. Look, technology solves some problems, but we also have to think of the problems that technology generates, right? Uh, uh, it's difficult for engineers to do that because the problems uh, technology generates may only happen uh, 50 years in the future, right? Uh, and we, we don't, we, it's difficult to, to foresee what's going to happen in the future. But, but I mean, we have a lot of, we have the history, the history of technology is there to tell us that all our inventions, all the technology that we developed solved some problems, 
and caused other problems that we had to solve afterwards. And look how we did it. We used more technology. Right? Not going against technology here, I'm only saying that it's, it's, uh, it's very reasonable that people in the MIT who think of technology as being a, a very important asset of our society, of something good, that they will not have a critical view of uh, collective intelligence or any other way of uh, dealing with this, right? Um, and we will end up uh, also talking a little bit about the, you know, things that I have to, to, to admit that I only became a little less optimistic myself after 2017, 2018, when we had already seen the way collective intelligence in this broad sense was used to elect Donald Trump in the United States, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and based on, uh, well, not necessarily only on fake news, but based on news that were sent very selectively to people uh, so that they decided, well, those who, who were likely to vote for that candidate, so that they, they went there and voted, you know, that in the United States it's not compulsory right, to vote. Uh, and those who were against, maybe to make, sure, make, make them less, uh, um, make, make it so that they didn't, uh, they, they thought that it wasn't important for them to go and vote. Right? Uh, and we saw, I mean, uh, in, in, in recent years, we saw um, uh, collective intelligence in this sense of fake news being used by all the, I, I don't even have to say the, the extreme uh, sides of our uh, polit uh, politics, right? But even by people who seem reasonable like ourselves, how many times do we just feel like forwarding something that we enjoyed and then we say, let me check if this is real. And then when you go check, you notice that that's, that's just something that you were inclined to believe that was real because you feel sort of that way. But whenever, you know, we are, we're all part of uh, fake news uh, these days. And in fact, we have always been. Right? Uh, we believe in what we wish to believe in this world. Uh, technology and our, our let's say, contemporary, I can't say that word, contemporary, can't say, contemporaneidade, or whatever, for those who understand Portuguese. Uh, uh, the, 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 the fact that we live these days, that we live in, in, in this world now, uh, makes us um, very uh, fit to believe in the world that we want to believe. This is why uh, many times uh, we have this feeling that in, uh, in spite of living in the same, let's say, sharing the same room, we have completely different perceptions of, uh, we perceive reality differently, right? Because we, we are exposed, uh, which means that others have the intention of exposing us to, 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 to a specific idea, and we ourselves decide to be exposed to ideas that please us for whatever reason. Right? So uh, reality became liquid, as some of the, of the philosophers say. Reality is liquid. Re reality is liquid because I look at reality and I see something. You look at the, what should be, at least for the Cartesians, should be the same reality and you see something completely different. Right? Technology has pushed us uh, to an extreme with respect to that. We, it was much more difficult for, some, for two people to look at the, let's say, the same reality and I'm being Cartesian here without any reason to be, uh, but uh, in, in the 19 in the, 19, the early 1900s, it would be more difficult for two people to look at the same phenomenon and see different things. Now, we not only see different things, but we, are, we, we have all the arguments to, to defend our own, uh, I will not say our own perceptions of reality, our own realities. Uh, and this has uh, an important effect on collective intelligence because collective intelligence starts uh, happening in what, what we call echo chambers, right? Places where whatever we, we say, we, we say echo is echoed back and reinforces our own understanding of the world. So we have to be aware of that. 
I, I think that collective intelligence as a field of research should spend a lot of energy discussing fake news, echo chambers, uh, the possibility of collective stupidity uh, because collective stupidity uses the same tools, the same means that have been uh, naively developed to be uh, the tools and means uh, to develop collective intelligence. Okay. Right, what I'll try to do now, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, I'm not sure if, it, if this will work well, uh, I will try to share my screen uh, with, uh, with you guys who are remote, uh, so that you understand what we are, will, will, will be discussed. My, my idea is to, to show you what we, we are going to do during the whole semester. And, um, and it may be, what I, the way I do this is by, uh, is by just uh, sending you a view of a, uh, how we call it here, a, a virtual camera, right? The problem of using um, Google Meet with a virtual camera is that it usually shows the whole image uh, with a low resolution, right? So you may, may be seeing, for those of you who are remote, you may be seeing my screen blurred a bit. If that happens, what I recommend to you to do is, uh, and maybe it will improve it a little bit, you go to, you know those three dots, the vertical dots that you have for, for configuration in your Google Meet, uh, in the, the lower part of Google Meet, uh, maybe you could go there and see if you can configure, um, let me see, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, well, I can't see it now, <laughs> but I thought it was there. Uh, can you see a configuration button there? And maybe you can configure the quality of the video that is coming to you. Check if it's, it's probably automatic. Try to have it uh, at the highest uh, resolution that you can, right? This may improve a little bit the quality of my, of my transmission here. Um, uh, if it doesn't, uh, I, I hope that at least you, you get my image uh, the, or the image of my screen with a quality that is good enough so that you understand what I'm doing. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, the, this, this, the, the screen that I'm showing you is the, sc the screen of our Moodle page, right? Uh, last night I sent you all um, uh, an email message with a link to this Moodle page, right? I know that the majority of you have already um, have already seen this message because I saw that mo most of you are already in our WhatsApp group, right? Uh, and if you see here in the in the first page of, of our, our Moodle screen here, uh, I tell you well where where we're going to meet. This the, this link for Google Google Meet you can keep it. Uh, it it's it's the link that we're going to use for all classes, right? So all classes from now until the end of May, uh, they will all happen through the same link. If you, well, if, if you f by any chance misses the link, you just ask in the WhatsApp group and hopefully some other colleague. We are doing collective intelligence here because I'm, I'm human and I'm, ma I'm, I'm a male. I can only do one thing at, at a time, right? If I, if I were my wife, I'd be able to teach this class and check my WhatsApp at the same time. I can't check the WhatsApp now, but I know that some of the students sometimes, if you, if you see there and if you notice that someone is having a problem, please let's... Uh, exercise our collective intelligence here and, and, and help colleagues figure out what the link is for, for, for the, the Google Meet. Uh, uh, see, uh, see uh, Maria Vittoria is asking if we already had a uh, WhatsApp group. Well, the link for the WhatsApp group is down here. Look, uh, Maria Vittoria, uh, in, at the lower part here. If you click here, uh, it will send you to, to a WhatsApp group. Of course, I can't. Uh, right now I'm, I'm on my computer here, uh, but if you click there, you will get to the WhatsApp group and, and be able to join. Uh, again, the, the idea of this WhatsApp group, uh, and uh, uh, the idea of the WhatsApp group is that uh, we share information when, for example, if I'm here on Friday morning and I have a problem I, and I cannot uh, connect to Google Meet for whatever reason, 
it's, it's on WhatsApp uh, that I will tell you sorry. The class, I'll, I'll teach the class to whoever is here right now. I will record it and it will be available for you afterwards, right? If that happens. Hopefully it will not happen, right? Uh, 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 the, the, the last few times that I've taught it this way, uh, it has worked very, in a very stable way. But anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, so Luciano is saying that he, he did not receive the email. Uh, maybe check if it didn't go to your uh, to your spam um, box. Uh, if not, please email me or, or uh, email me afterwards. Uh, the, uh, I believe that you all have my email, right? It's Gremo G R A E M L, my surname at utfpr uh, uh, br. Uh, just email me there, and I will see. It seems that, that there are people that did not receive the, the email. Well, uh, if, if you did not receive the email, uh, my question is, how were you able to find our, the link for this connection here? Uh, was it through, through a, a Google Meet invitation or something? Because I can include also there all the information. Just want to know from someone who did not get my email, uh, just want to know how you got to know the, the, the link to the, the Google Meet. Uh. Okay, but the, the link uh, with the email to the invite of the class, ah, th th that may be, okay, this, this email with the invite for the, for the class may have been through, uh, you will probably see that I generated a, also a Google Calendar, and I included all your emails there, so maybe this, this could have been an automatic email uh, with uh, the link to, to the class. But what we will do, uh, uh, we will, um, well, I'll, I'll very quickly just sh share with you here those links. If this allows me, just a second. I don't know what's happening here. Okay, let, let me share the link to the WhatsApp group. Oh, someone has already, oh, see, the collective intelligence is already working. Leonardo had already shared the, the WhatsApp group. Please, uh, guys, okay, so then, then, uh, then we're okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and, um, all right. So, again, uh, I hope the quality of the image is good enough so that you s understand what we're doing here. Uh, I just want to very briefly tell you there's the, the way that we're going to go with this class. Uh, usually the first, uh, it's, it's four classes a day, right? So we start at 8.20, go until 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, then we have a 20 minute break, and then we go from uh, 10.20 until midday, right? Uh, some of the students at P uh, PPGA, the business uh, program, uh, may, I think that's, that's also how it appears in your calendar, right? Uh, what we will do is the first two hours are going to be sort of lecture. I'll be talking about the topic. Uh, that doesn't mean that I have to talk on, on my own, right? You can ask questions. Uh, please, if, uh, I, I prefer that you, if you can, those that are remote, that you open your mic and, 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 and ask a question instead of writing it on, on chat. Because sometimes I don't, again, I said, I am a male professor here. I can only do one thing at, at a time. Sometimes I don't see if you ask me a question on, on, uh, on the screen, right? So just open your mic, and if you're here, just raise your hand or start talking. We don't, I mean, we, uh, the idea is that we, we can take the, the discussion in whatever direction we feel like based on the readings that we have done, right? Of course, today you, are, you have your blank uh, brains there because you didn't read anything for the, the class today, but for next week, from, from next week on, there will be always be some reading that has to be done beforehand, and based on that reading, I will do a some some, some a, a sort of lecture for 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 the for the first two to first uh, hour and a half or so, uh, and then after the break we will discuss. And the way we will discuss this, I know that some of you are very fluent in English, uh, others uh, are trying to you know to get back into it. Uh, so, 
in order to, to make sure that we include everyone, we will be doing our discussion uh, by means of a written forum. Right? Uh, so I will pose some questions in the in the in, in the in the in a forum here on, on Moodle. Uh, and, and those questions will be there for us to start a discussion, but we'll do it in a written form so that those that still have problem with English at least, well, you use some Google Translation or something there. Nowadays, Google Translation has, has also become much better. Uh, you can interact in English. Uh, our agreement here is uh, everything that we do has to be in English. We have some six or seven student that, students in this class that do not speak Portuguese. Uh, and, uh, so, and besides, if we're physically in this room here, when we enter that, that door, only English, right? Yeah, even if we have to use mimic, no problem, but we don't use Portuguese here, okay? Um, uh, and, uh, and so it's going to be like that. First two, first two, two we have four classes uh, a day on, on Fridays. The first two are going to be uh, me talking and maybe you, you can already ask, but then, then it's oral. Uh, and, and then after the break, we get, we sit down and, and this is why it's going to be important for those who are here in the, in the, the room that you have an access to, to these computers. I, I know that uh, the guys who are not from UTFPR, you're not from UTFPR, you're not from, right. Uh, okay, so maybe the other guys, you just have them, give them your password for them to, I, I don't know, uh, or, or if there is, I don't know if there is, an, is, is there a, a general password for, for this room? No? Just, just open uh, the, their, their computers with, with your password. I, I can assure that these guys are decent people and that they're not. <laughs> by, by the way, and, and keep an eye on them anyway, right? Uh, <laughs> but let's make sure that whoever is here has to have uh, 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 the possibility of, uh, of connecting to these computers. Uh, and uh, whoever is at home has no problem with that. Okay, so let's, let me try and browse. By, and by the way, today we're going to finish uh, earlier. We, don't, we will not have the second part of the class with discussion because we still don't have anything to discuss, right? We may, uh, I will not have a break. If I need a little more time and, uh, and, and we go beyond 10 o'clock, uh, th today is going to be the exception, right? But uh, from next week on, we will plan for the first until 10 o'clock in the morning. 10, and when I say 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm sorry for those guys who are in, the, in, in a Pacific time, right? For you, it, it probably means six o'clock in the morning. Uh, there are people that have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to watch this class here. Whoever is in California uh, uh, has to do that. Uh, in fact, uh, I believe that we, we do have... Well, whoever is in Panama had to wake up very early, right? Antonio, what time do you have to wake up to, <laughs> to be with us? Or maybe he went back to, to sleep. <laughs> uh, let me see if he's here. I know that Antonio is from, yeah, I can't see everyone here. Uh, anyway, uh, all right. Is Antonio there? No, I can't see him in my screen here. So maybe, maybe he went back to, to bed. Uh, one thing that I will do with these guys, if they're, they're for, for whoever is too, has a different time zone and, and it's too radical, I understand that. I mean, for we start at 8.20 here in the morning in, in Brazil. Uh, if you have to start at 4 o'clock, 4.20, which I believe it's the time in California uh, to start, you, I mean, uh, I, I prefer that you watch this a little later. It's always go all going to be recorded. Uh, and, and then you interact with the, with the forum um, afterwards. Uh, or maybe when you wake up, uh, it's already time to be in the forum and you, you get straight to the, to the forum. Uh, for the others, uh, talking now Curitiba time, Brazil time, uh, uh, we, we start at 8.20, go until 10, uh, then quick break, and then we come back at 10.20 until 12, and the second part is only written. I'll be sitting down here also, uh, uh, by the way, right now I'm standing here in, the, in front of the room so that I can see the students that, he, that are behind my computer, and I can also see, can, can also see you here. Okay, uh, so let's, uh, I'll browse down here, scroll down uh, my screen so that I show you what we'll be doing. Um, well, I, I had a, a chapter here that would be Introduction, Collective Intelligence, a Global Concern. Uh, my main idea here is to say that this is not something that 
came out of my mind, right? Uh, there's a lot of people discussing this around the, the world. As I told you, Pierre Lévy is uh, one of the philosophers who started discussing collective intelligence and, and coined this, uh, the, the term. But again, uh, collective intelligence happens since human beings became aware that they could do things collectively better than they could do individually, right? So uh, when we started, and, I, and maybe it's from the origins of the human being, right? Uh, we, if we worked as a bunch, let's say, to try and hunt a mammoth or a lion or whatever, uh, or any animal that would uh, be our food, uh, and if we decided to do that collectively instead of alone because we thought that by doing that we would be more effective, that was already collective in intelligence in place, right? So. The term is sort of new. Uh, I think it started being used in, in the 1990s uh, with Pierre Lévy and some other people. Uh, but, but the concept has been around uh, forever. Okay? Uh, I included here uh, some links. Uh, I, I usually use this, this button here for, for links to YouTube videos uh, when, when they are YouTube videos that are not generated by ourselves. Um, so I have here Pierre Lévy talking to us, this is in French, um, but sometimes it's good so that you see that those, the people that we are talking about are humans like we are, right? Uh, I'm sure that if you Google Pierre Lévy or if you YouTube Pierre Lévy, you even find uh, him uh, speaking English uh, in, some, in some situations and he, he may be talking about collective intelligence because that's one of his major, has been uh, one of his major topics of research. Uh, Tom Malone, uh, this is one of the, the MIT guys that I mentioned to you here. I think this is a short video in which he's talking about the things that they do at his lab in, 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 in the MIT. Uh, this is in English. Uh, in fact, whatever is not in English in this, uh, in, in this course will be, uh, I will say in what language that is, but of course it's not, not, not important, right? I mean, you don't have to know French or Portuguese, just forget about those. It's just to, to show that there are people talking about these things in different places. Uh, so, Rogério Costa is a researcher uh, here from Brazil. Uh, Jean-Francois Nubel, uh, I believe that this guy is French, but he could be Belgian or whatever. Uh, he, he, this, this talk about him is something a little, you know, uh, it seems that he, he had already smoked some marijuana. But I shouldn't say that on something that will be recorded, but you know, Auroville is uh, an attempt of building a collective intelligence town in India. So a lot of people who, who believed in, in, in doing things collectively went there and started this place. So it seems it's a little spir spiritual, uh, but again, interesting, and, and he is discussing concepts that relate to collective intelligence, so you may uh, uh, relate to that. Saskia Sassin, one of uh, the great uh, uh, researchers of the of of today, right? Uh, also, she's not a, a, a collective intelligence researcher, but she 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 was here talking about collective intelligence. Uh, and then we'll have okay next class next week. Uh, what we'll do? We will go through three, in fact, three maybe I think it's maybe it may be four. Let me see. Uh, oh no, it's a little more. It's fi five papers. Uh, there are five papers uh, that I included here in a class that I called My Entire Information Systems and Organizations Course in One Day. Why I, I also have a course that uh, I usually offer in the second semester of the year on information systems and organizations uh, in which we discuss information systems. Information systems is a field in the computing computer science uh, area that is that field that is in between computer science and business uh, and th that discusses the uses of technology by organizations, right? Um, and I've been teaching this course for many years and of course it's a, it's a course that takes a whole semester but I chose four of the papers that I discussed there and brought here because Although I, was, I have been teaching this course since the, the 90s, and you see that these references are, most of them are from the 90s, uh, these guys were already talking about collective intelligence. Although 
they did not use the term, right? They, 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 they didn't know that they were talking about collective intelligence. But we have here uh, Vinka Truman and Henderson uh, in, uh, they, they write about real strategies for virtual organizing. And the way that they virtually organize, or they, they, the, the concepts that they had back then, this is what people nowadays call digital transformation, right? It's crazy that uh, 25 years later we're still talking about the same thing, right? But they, what they were proposing was digital transformation in the 90s, uh, and, uh, but, but they were already showing that by organizing, companies organizing virtually, they, they, they would be able to gather the knowledge of the customers. They would be able to gather the knowledge from the suppliers and so on and so forth. So, you know, they, they were not talking about collective intelligence, but they, uh, well, they were talking about collective intelligence. They were not referring to collective intelligence, right? Uh, Makina, uh, 1995, even before that, right? Makina is a, a, a marketing guru. Uh, and, uh, and Makina um, used to say that we should use technology to build a dialogue with customers. And the idea of building a dialogue was we want to understand what they think. And understanding what the, thing, the, 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 the customers think, think means allowing uh, not open innovation to hap uh, help, uh, happen outside the organization, but allowing uh, the customers to tell us what they, they need so that we think uh, uh, what we do uh, more suitably. Okay? Uh, so, again, McKenna did not mention uh, uh, collective intelligence in his work. In fact, in 1995, I believe maybe when you read, check that. I'm not even sure if he mentioned, well, I, I think he mentioned the internet in his paper, but I, I think he only mentioned the internet once or twice in a five or, five or six page paper, right? which seems weird when, when what he's saying is building a dialogue using technology, right? But we have to think that in 1995, none of the companies, n n none of what, n n nothing of what we have on the internet was available back then. Google was not there. Google started in 99. Amazon was not there. Amazon, if, if you think about business, I think it's 98 or 99 as well. Uh, well, uh, all of this uh, Facebook, Instagram, all, the, all these things, they are all things that happened in the, 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 the 2000 and something, right? So it's, it's interesting how someone can talk about collective intelligence based on the technologies of our days. And by, by the way, the reason why people did not talk as much about, uh, about collective intelligence before the 90s uh, although we've always had collective intelligence, uh, was because uh, the technologies that we have since the 90s, uh, it's not that they allow collective intelligence, but they, they make it much a, a much stronger proposition. It makes it much easier for us to connect to others and build things. If we think of collective intelligence as the effort to achieve a result, uh, and it also makes it much more feasible to build the collective intelligence, if we think of collective intelligence as being the result, right? Again, notice there's several ways we can see it. We, we can look at collective intelligence as being the means to achieve something, or we can think of ways of using technology to achieve this collective intelligence, uh, which is a, was a romantic idea because we got faster to collective stupidity than to collective intelligence, apparently. But anyway, um, and then we have uh, Nambisan and Nambisan. If you, I know, I'm, I'm, th this is going to be, th there's going to be a lot of reading in this uh, course, right? So spare enough time. If we, if we have four, four hours together here, spare at least another 10 hours or 12 hours a week for the reading. It's, there, there's, it, it's demanding that way, right? But if you have to skip, if anyone has to skip one of the papers that I'm suggesting, uh, I maybe maybe you could skip Nambisan and Nambisan, right? Because what Nambisan and Nambisan do is they talk about the same things as Makina had already uh, talked in his paper some 13 years before, 
they don't, it's, it's weird because Nabi Sallallahu and Nabi Sallallahu do not mention Makiana, but they're talking about exactly the same thing. But they are more specific to ways in which companies can use the, or crowdsource a lot of, they, they don't mention the word crowdsourcing either. These are all terms that appeared later. I, I, I mean, crowds, no, crowdsourcing, I don't think that it was still a term that existed in 2008. Not sure. But they don't mention crowdsourcing. But what they do there is talk about crowdsourcing happening to uh, conceptualize new products, to develop new products together with the customers, to test new products. I mean, this, this is something that in the software industry we've always seen, right? The beta versions of software being distributed in a way that the, the customer becomes the part of the, the testing team, right? Uh, advertising and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a very interesting paper. It's just that it, uh, I realize that there is a lot of reading. Start with the others. Leave this one for, 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 for to be the last if you don't have time to read all. Uh, then we have uh, uh, an interview with Michael Dell. This Magreta paper is an interview with Michael Dell from Dell Computers. Uh, and um, uh, in this case, I think for those of you who have already been my, my undergraduate students, this is a paper that you read uh, back then. Uh, uh, it's a paper in which it's, it's an interview about the, the strategy, the strategic planning of, of, uh, of Dell computers in the 90s, of course it's in 98, uh, and it shows how Michael Dell used the collective intelligence of its suppliers to improve the quality of its computers. Uh, it used the, 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 intelligent, uh, the collective intelligence of its customers to get a better understanding of what products should be delivered to the market. Right? So very interesting also. I find this, again, this, these are all classical seminal studies uh, in computer uh, in, in information systems uh, and uh, I find them all interesting. And then we have here a paper by Chesbro. Chesbro is the, the Berkeley guy uh, who writes about open innovation. Uh, well, considering that he didn't think that collective intelligence and open innovation had anything to do with one another. I'm, I'm being a little mean, right, again, these guys probably receive a thousand requests of people to, to go there and spend some time in their labs. They don't have much room. And they're also a public university, so they also have their constraints. So I'm being a little mean, but anyway, uh, I will s say if, you, if you're really short on time, this is the second paper that if you have to skip, skip the, the, the Nabisan paper and the Chesbro paper uh, and read the other three. But if you have enough time, read the five of them, okay? Uh, and then, I'm still not sure, I, I, I kept here uh, the forums, the discussion forums from previous years and I'm inclined to, to keep them there because collective intelligence doesn't build only on what's happening on the present, right? I mean, what other students wrote in the past uh, when they were reading this, uh, maybe also good for our discussion. So I'm still until today and, and, and next week I'll decide if I'll start a new forum or I'll just add, add new questions here and, and allow you to even interact with what, whatever we already have here. But the basic idea of the, the forums is, uh, and I'm not even sure what we had here, let me just click here to check. Uh, see I had, uh, uh, Yeah, I had, I had included a few questions here, and then uh, they, they, I mean, they just responded to it. I, I, I'll probably keep that. You will see that uh, maybe what others, as I said, what others have thought in their discussion in previous semesters will do no harm. Okay. Um, so. Um, let me see, had I skipped anything here? Ah, well, I've, I've, I've skipped one important thing. I skipped showing you this wiki here at the very top of our page. Wiki is a very revolutionary uh, collective intelligence tool. I mean, a forum is a collective intelligence tool because it allows us to, to share ideas, right? Um, so let's say a forum is a, is a good tool to build collective intelligence because we're all uh, 
uh, in that sense, we're, we're all discussing our ideas, and at the same time, we're we're being exposed to other people's ideas that may be different to ours, and we should be surprised. I, I mean, the, the the good thing about uh, you know the thing that 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 Pierre Levy liked the most o on the internet of the 1990s, he said it was great because he could see that there was always. Uh, there was always something to learn with someone else. Uh, he, he even has uh, this saying in his book, which I find very noble, very human. Uh, Every human being knows something that nobody else knows. So we all, we can all contribute to a better world. Uh, of course, maybe he was a little naive uh, in not knowing that we are not concerned about that. We want to impose our own ideas many times, right? It's, it seems that although humans have two ears and one mouth, we want to talk more than we want to listen. Okay? This is something that maybe we, we will actually get to collective intelligence, to the collective intelligence that is, that is possible through the technological means that we built, when we learn that we should talk when we have something to say. But we should always listen to what others are saying because what others are saying may change the way we think. Whenever it only reinforces the way we think, it's not doing it as any good, right? Because, I mean, that we already know. But uh, what can others say that change the way we think? Uh, I'm not sure if this is very human to have this kind of perception or if we just want to show others that we are right, right? It's, it's more important to be, you know, to impose our right ideas than to know other good ideas. Uh, so the forum is a tool that allows us uh, to do that to some extent. And another very, I, I find very revolutionary uh, tool is the wiki, very collective intelligence oriented as well. This is, these were all the tools that fascinated the first people to talk about collective intelligence because they said, Look, we can build things together. This is, uh, the wiki is more like, the forum is to discuss ideas and to get to, let's say, more intelligent ideas as a, uh, collectively. The wiki uh, is to build little pieces uh, or bring little pieces together uh, and, and, and make a, a hole that is larger than we could do on our own. So it's, the wiki is more like aggregating things. So I can assure you that there, is, there are parts of this wiki, it's, it's not very big because I, have never emphasized it as much as it should, but uh, I can assure you that there are parts of this wiki here that I've never seen. So some people say, and, and those in organizations say, and I say, a wiki in an organization is great because it allows people to share their knowledge. But then, then there's always that guy, that, that person who, who wants to be in control and say, but do we have, how do we control that? We don't. So excuse me if you see anything here that shouldn't be here. Uh, I mean, we, we try to have this um, course as open and, and, and as friendly as possible so that everyone, nobody feels that they should try and graffiti our walls, right? But there's a possibility. Anyone can come here uh, and okay, here it's, it's to view, but I can also edit. And, I can, and by, by being able to edit, I can delete everything uh, or I can include a new item. Uh, and what I, what, what I count on you here is if at, at any stage you find anything here that you find that is not suitable, either delete it yourself or tell me, Alex, I think that this should, should be, pay, pay, pay attention to this because this shouldn't be there, right? But it's, it's open, anyone can write, it's, it's a chaotic tool because anyone can write. You can write in a very hidden place where, you know, and, and uh, what, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm not checking the, what's there all the time, but I, I, I get surprised with the amount of interesting things that I find here because some of you found uh, a video and you think, well, I think that this relates to collective intelligence. You come and include a link here, right? And then your friends uh, come there and they, they see your link and then they can include something else. So I, I, I like the concept of the wiki as being a very strong collective intelligence tool, but it's that kind of collective intelligence tool that helps build uh, uh, the sense of responsibility in the group and build uh, a sense where well, we're 
it's very easy to graffiti this and to, to, to include uh, something that is not, wouldn't be acceptable here, but we're not going to do that because we're all here to learn with one another, right? Um, okay, so uh, if, you, if you want to just check whatever we have here, uh, there's even the first item here. Well, now I'm in edit mode, so if I click here, I'm editing. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to view mode. And then in the view mode, you will see, for example, that I, uh, we even have a session here that is information on how to help us build this wiki. It is uh, telling what what are the, the special characters that you use to put something in bold or, or italic or whatever. Uh, and then all these things here, you can either help us keep building uh, or even including more items or including your own ideas under these items, okay? As if it were a, a website. Of course, this, this can only be viewed by whoever is in our, is in our Moodle platform. But let me go, okay, so we are already aware of what we have to do for the next class. We have to read these uh, papers that are, that relate here to my entire information systems and organizations course in one day. Uh, now, now I'll very briefly talk about the other topics that we'll, we'll discuss. Uh, the wisdom of crowds, this is one perspective of collective intelligence. Uh, it's a perspective that says uh, um, we may not know, I mean, whatever knowledge we have is biased. But whatever knowledge you have is also biased, and whatever knowledge he has is also biased. We are all biased in different ways. So when we average our knowledge, we cancel the, the bias cancels out each other, and we get only the, the, the what, what is right. Right. Uh, this is the, the principle behind uh, the wisdom of crowds, thinking that on on average, so so big crowds will know it better. Big crowds when. Uh, when asked something, uh, will although each one of, of those people uh, uh, is going to, to let's say to, to, to express his or her own opinion, uh, when we average things out, we get to the best result. Right? There is a book by uh, Surovieki. Uh, I hope that uh, in, in fact uh, this semester I haven't checked my links. If you find that any links are broken, please tell me and I'll try to solve them as soon as possible. Of course, for example, the link to this Surovieki book is a link to somewhere in the, in the internet. Sometimes maybe some, someone takes it out. If, if it's not there, just tell me and I'll try to, to find out where things are, right? But anyway, this is a bestseller guy. He's not a, an academic, but he wrote uh, about the wisdom of crowd, crowds based on this concept that we together decide better than than, than individually simply because the biases that each one of us has uh, is cancelled. Of course, for this to work, we need uh, to remember our, our statistics that to say that each one's biases is cancelled by the others means that we are not all biased in the same direction. So this doesn't work if uh, everyone who's, who's been included in, in the effort of collectively deciding something if everyone is biased the same in the same direction. So fake news destroys the wisdom of crowds. Uh, even uh, one of us uh, expressing uh, uh, our own idea uh, and, and being powerful enough to influence others already uh, affects that. This would need the, let's say, the sample to be random and not to be a biased sample of people or and, and, and if it's the population, even being the population, for the population to take the right decision, it should not have been influenced by a stronger, a stronger ideas that made everyone think in a biased way. So it's, again, it's, it's, it's sort of utopic. Uh, we'll never get a situation where we are, we're all biased in different ways, completely like that, uh, unless we're talking about uh, things that 
do not matter much, right? For those things that matter a lot, we, we are always you know, fighting for, 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 for our ideas. Uh, and uh, so we'll have to take the wisdom of uh, crowds with some caution. But it is, it is a way of uh, making collective decisions. In fact, elections, for example, are an expression of the wisdom of crowds. Okay? Whoever, uh, we, we have several candidates, people vote on their candidates, and one of them will be elected. Uh, if the wisdom of crowds works perfectly, we can assure that the one that was elected was the best, let's say, the, 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 the best, or the most suitable uh, candidate for that moment. Uh, uh, and even if, if we, even, even if the wisdom of the crowd doesn't work, uh, that, that uh, is still a collective, it's, it's still a collective decision in which you say, okay, if my thinking is not the one that prevails, uh, at least I know that I participated in the decision and I showed what my intent was. Again, when we talk about our politicians, this never works well, right? Because uh, the good politician should be that one uh, who, when he got to power, he or she, um, he or she would think, uh, going to think, okay, uh, and now I have to focus on doing the things that those that did not vote for me want me to do. This should be the focus of someone who, who is going to rule, let's say, a country, right? Because you know, it's natural that without thinking, I will do whatever those that voted for me expect me to. But now I have to focus and concentrate to make sure that I understand the, the ideas of the others and do things, considering that I'm ruling for everyone, that, that I'm doing things that will please not in a way that I will get them to, be, to vote for me in the next election, but please in the sense that they are also citizens and that they are also paying taxes and that, so they're... And that they are also part of our, let's say, they share the same space with us, so, so we have to, to live, in the, live together. Uh, so all of that should uh, make our, our politicians think, what do I have to do to make sure that I govern for those who did not vote on me? Does that ever happen? No. Right? So, see, uh, that we're discussing here principles, uh, ideas, uh, and they only work to some extent. But one thing that the wisdom of crowds does here is after you get someone elected and, and well first it, it reinforces the power of democracy because it says well if we have in a de democratic uh, place where people can each one can express their idea uh, and, and, and that's taken into account to choose let's say wh whoever is going to be our leader uh, this uh, will make everyone feel that we are committed to it. Um, but it's, it's not perfect. Anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll discuss this next. This is going to be our second topic. And then we'll, some, some of these topics will, will, will need more than one class, but I'll tell you later, right? Uh, then we're going to, sorry. Then we're going to, 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 to well, so the, 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 the wisdom of crowds is uh, typically here uh, a topic that we'll discuss over more than, than one week. Then um, we will be a little more formal on our understanding of collective intelligence, seeing what several authors consider it is. I've already told you that after having read all these guys and, and you know, and when I tell you that I'll be happy if by the end of the, sem the, 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 the course of the semester you, you, you have a, a better understanding of collective intelligence, I have to tell you that most of these guys still don't talk to one another, right? And in the sense that uh, what one considers to be collective intelligence, the other was going to say, point, point his finger and say, well, that's crowdsourcing. And for me, crowdsourcing is not collective intelligence because it's the intelligence of one person trying to manipulate everyone else, right? Uh, so there's going to be all this debate. You will see that there is a conflict among different ideas here. I don't intend to solve that, those conflicts, right? Uh, I think we build on the conflicts and we, we, we start understanding that it's not, it's not one thing, neither the other, it's, it's a mixture of everything. So, but we'll try to, to formalize our understanding of collective intelligence, that will happen 
in week four. Uh, then, uh, then we're going to talk about, well, we talk about uh, uh, IQ, right? The, the intelligence coefficient, uh, intelligent, intelligence quotient, I think they call it. Uh, is it possible for us to think of a collective intelligence coefficient? Some authors, and uh, mainly uh, Woolley, um, who was originally uh, a PhD student at the MIT, I believe, so she worked with uh, Tom Malone and, and those guys at the MIT, and later on she went to, uh, I think she's in Carnage Mellon these days or so, but Woolley uh, and, and some others, even this Agarval, uh, uh, was a professor here at Fundação Getúlio Vargas at some stage, I'm not sure if uh, that's still the case, but these people here were focusing on, let's see what, how we can measure the collective intelligence of a group. And this is very good even, even for small groups, I mean if you, if you, have in, if you work on a company and, uh, or, or on a project and you have a team, is this the right team to, to develop this project based on collective intelligence um, concepts. Right? Uh, I think that this is very relevant because many times teams are built without considering the fact that it's a team, right? So it has to, uh, the, the sum of the parts has to be uh, more, sorry, sorry, the, what is, how, how do you say that? Uh, uh, the, the result has to be more than the sum of the parts in a group. Right? Uh, otherwise, uh, we end up uh, in a situation where, where we have, let's say, a soccer team, where we have a lot of, uh, what, are, what are examples of jogadores, fominhas, uh, those players that play on their own and they need the whole team working for them. Please give me, give me an example of uh, one of these players. We have plenty of them in Brazil. Huh? No, not Brazilian, but uh, Mbappé. Mbappé, okay, yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's say that it's not only the Brazilians that, 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 that do that. But anyway, sometimes you have a player uh, that is really good, but, uh, well, you, you can build a collective intelligence around that player and say, well, everyone plays for him because he's the one who's going to, to kick, the, the, kick the ball and, 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 and score the goal, right? Um, so you can organize a team based on that person. This is a possibility. Uh, well, but then you think, okay, but Mbappé is a great player, so let's have a team of 11 Mbappés. Will that team be a success? Well, I'm not sure how good he is a goalkeeper, right? Maybe he's not very good as a defender either because he's not as strong as some of the, the defenders sometimes are. So, again, when I'm building a team, I have to consider all the different skills that I need. It could even be I, I, I will have someone who's really genial uh, and then I will build the, the remaining of the team around that person or I will build, and many, many teams prefer to do that, I'll, I'll build a, a, a much more humble team where, where I don't have any stars but because I don't have any stars I have much more commitment because it's much more fun uh, to play a game when you know that you're there and, and, and that you are one of the players and, and, and that you're not there just to serve someone else so that he gets all the, the glory. Yeah. Okay? Uh, so, thinking about the collective intelligence of a, a group may be something interesting. Uh, I, I have to, to anticipate it to you that uh, their studies are still not conclusive, so uh, some of the, the, the things that they discuss there in their study make sense uh, and uh, and we should pay attention to, for example, why do we talk so much about diversity these days? Because diversity brings different ideas. Okay? Diversity exposes us to the different, and sometimes we're not prepared, uh, so it changes us. Right? It, it has to change us. It, it makes us uncomfortable. So diversity is, well, there to, I, I see two reasons why our society emphasizes so much diversity these days. First is because it is a, a, a let's say, a source of innovation and, and ideas and different perspectives, different forms to look at a problem and to solve that problem and to address situations. 
uh, this is more like from the let's say the uh, resource side of it and, and from the demand side of it it is because companies think well you know if, if I include all this diversity into our society that means that I'll have much more many more consumers so I think there's a lot, a lot of the the diversity inclusion that we have these days doesn't happen for noble causes as we would expect. It happens simply because uh, those who, who are pushing it think that there is more money to be gained that way. But anyway, sometimes it's good that you, you align the, the not as nice interests with some good causes and, uh, and we'll, we'll probably get to, to a world in which we have more comprehension about uh, the others, more understanding of, of, of the others, and that doesn't harm us, right, to, to, to understand that others are different to us, okay? Um, all right, so this, this, this is going to be a topic that we'll spend some time on, and then um, humans as, as sensors, um, we, if we think of collective intelligence as a means, right, Whatever we do generates data, and that data can be used to achieve some result. The result does not necessarily have to be a result wished by the collective. Hopefully, I mean, we that, that are optimistic about collective intelligence, we think it would be great if, if it was always like that, right? It doesn't happen, it will not be like that, so we have to be critical about this. But at the same time, uh, we are generating a lot of data, and that data that we generate individually, but that can be aggregated, generates a, a collective um, amount of uh, data that can be analyzed, uh, and that results in decisions being made, either individually or collectively. For example, we can use humans as sensors to monitor the use of uh, the Urban, urban, uh, urban transport system and we find out that there are many more people that are using the north-south line for example than the east-west line here in Curitiba that are the two major uh, um, uh, lines for buses uh, and that may allow the mayor on his own or, or with a, a little team to plan urban, urban development or it may allow uh, citizens to empower themselves and getting that data, demanding uh, s specific services based on that data. So again, it doesn't, for, at least for our study here, it doesn't matter who's going to benefit. Of course, it does matter, we, but, but, but we will see that there will be collective intelligent, intelligence efforts that benefit uh, just a few, and that the crowds are just the means being used, and there are, there are, there are other uh, collective intelligence efforts that empower citizens and, or empower people, uh, and we want to check what kind of uh, projects we, we think about developing. By the way, we, uh, well, maybe this is a good, considering that I said that we, we have to choose how, or, or think how we, we think that collective in intelligence can be uh, used, uh, I, I already anticipate the, the final assessment of this course. I will, you'll be assessed uh, uh, in, in two ways. First, by your participation in the, the Moodle forums. Right? So I want you to participate and, and, and participation there means participation with really with ideas. So you have to read to participate. If you, the week that, I, I know that there will be weeks that for whatever reason someone was not able to read. Please remember, uh, everyone knows something in this world. We should know that we know nothing about something and be quiet. Right? Don't, let, let's not mess up with, uh, with uh, a topic that we did not, that we, we're not well informed at least to start a discussion. Uh, but you will be assessed by your, your participation in the, in the forums. Uh, this is going to happen along the time, right? So, I mean, don't, please don't come to, it, it's not a matter of uh, a week before the end of the semester, saying, "Well, now I'm going to write. Now that I was able to read everything, I will write something on each topic. Right? I will be checking your your progress uh, a long time. So that's something that I'll, I'll be assessing. 
to some extent, of course, I'm not here to be the police, and you know, it's not. Uh, and uh, and again, you're the ones who have to learn. Uh, I mean, I. It, the good thing about being a, a teacher is that you're always learning along, but uh, but I don't have to learn. Uh, I, I want to learn also, but I don't have. You have to learn, right? Uh, I don't have to, to to learn. So I will do this, and uh, this is going to give me a feeling, right? So it, it will already give me an idea of um, you know how, how how seriously you are you're doing this. And again, each one has to do it their own rhythm. Uh, I understand some of you who find it very easy to read all these texts that are in English. Others of you are struggling to be here, right? And, and say, come on, uh, I hardly understand what's happening. Uh, I'd say, keep here. Uh, of course, you, you'll probably not get the same results as someone who's, who, who started a step uh, up already, but, but keep here. Uh, and uh, that, that, that if you're serious about what you're doing, uh, you will survive the process, right? Um, but but at the end, I will ask uh, af after we finish the course, you will write a little essay, which is going to be something like two or three pages, not more than that. Uh, and the idea is, uh, well, the, the topic is going to be, uh, what can I take from this, the concepts of this uh, course, to my thesis or to my dissertation? We have doctoral students here, we have master students here. Or to my trabalho de conclusão de curso, which I, my, you know, the, the, the work to finish my undergraduate studies. What, what, what is there that, that, that I learned here that I can take to take there, right? It's going to be three pages, not more than that. I mean, considering that I have some 27 students but, uh, times three, it's, it's some 80 pages for me to read at the end. It's reasonable. And again, what I will do of those uh, final projects, I will read them, all the, the, uh, usually I try to do it on the same day to, to try and be as fair as I can in, in the way I do, and I will have uh, three piles, the pile of A's, the pile of B's, the pile of C's, and I hopefully will not have any piles of D's and E's or whatever, uh, uh, but basically uh, be sure that will be A's, B's and C's, uh, most probably most grades are going to be B's, can I already advance you that because I, I want whoever gets an A to know G. I, I, I really cause a very good impression here. Uh, those who got a B think that this is very fair. I, you know, uh, those who got uh, a C, maybe it was, uh, uh, well, I, I was not able to express uh, myself in a way that, uh, that Alexandre uh, really learned all the, the all, the, the, all my effort, all, all my learning, but the important thing is I hope that everyone passes the, 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 this course, right? And, and passing this course means attending classes, uh, you know, participating in the, in, the, in the forum in the second part of the class, that one that will start at 10.20 until midday, uh, and, uh, and at the end doing some reflection on, on this. It's not going to, it's, this, this course is going to be tough in, on the sense that there is a lot of reading to be done. Right? But I, at the same time, I promise you that the reading is, uh, in general, very good reading. Very, I, I mean, I hope that most of the texts, you, you, when you finish reading, you say, gee, I learned something here that's, uh, I, I, again, it's not something that you will use the next day at work, but it's something that you will use uh, for life, uh, uh, hopefully. Right? Um, but there's so the, the, the course is, is heavy in the sense that there is some 10, 12 hours of reading every week uh, for this course. It's a it's a graduate course, right? And graduate here we mean uh, there there are some undergrads. We we take that into consideration, but at the same time, I mean you're already challenging yourselves doing doing a course in English, doing so do it seriously, okay? Uh, Right, and, uh, well, and, and I stopped here at the humans as, as, as sensors simply because I was saying we may, when, we, when we think humans as sensors, it gives us that same feeling that I, that I have when I decide on a, a new class that I want to teach and I, I said, let me check if I'm on the right track, let me see, see what chat GPT, is, is that, that chat GPT, uh, the name of that, that technology, let me see if uh, that technology would suggest what I'm thinking, right? which already shows that I'm thinking that I'm less than him or her, whatever that thing is. Uh, 
So humans as sensors means, gee, we became just a sensor. Yeah, what well, we are, we can be just as, and, and this, this um, specifically this text here in which uh, uh, Thiago Silva is, is one of our professors here at UTFPR. He used to be a professor at PPGCA, the, the Applied Computing Program. Now he is at uh, CPGI, the other, the other uh, computer, computer engineering or whatever uh, graduate program we have. But uh, this is the, the, the way that they went on this discussion here, thinking of ways in which uh, we can plan the cities based on humans being, uh, being sensors of, what, of, of their behavior, of what they're doing, of when they're doing and, and everything. Okay? Uh, right, then we have uh, the possibility of use of collective intelligence for citizen empowerment or totalitarian surveillance. Because, I mean, if we become just censors, we, we can't do anything without the possibility of hiding, right? This is not very good because we. There are many things that we do. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure that I, I, I even said a few things in this class here that if someone went there and cut that little bit out of context, that could be 10 years from now, it would be still to say, oh, look what this guy said. I would say, yeah, it's me saying, I will not remember the context. And I'll say, yeah, that, that doesn't seem right, right, or whatever. Uh, so whatever we say or whatever we do becomes there forever. Uh, when we become the sen when we become sensors and when we have technology that keeps and stores all the information that these these sensors um, collect, right? Uh, do we are, are we what uh, do do we represent or or does does that collected data represent us? Uh, uh, is is that is that is that a right? Does it provide a right interpretation of who we are or whatever. Uh, all, of, all of that, I mean, total, the, we, are, we are getting into totalitarian surveillance for sure. Uh, and we're getting to a situation in which we like that. We like cameras everywhere because we think that it's safer. And it probably is. But at the same time, it's safer. Uh, it, it invades our privacy in ways that it has never been invaded in, in the past. So we'll have to discuss here uh, where we're, we're going with this, and, and, and we have here a few texts, or a few papers on that. Even We even have uh, Obama's Transparency and Open Government uh, Memorandum here. I thought that this was getting out of fashion, because transparency seemed, it seemed that the world was getting really transparent at some stage, and then later things uh, went on a different uh, direction. Uh, but uh, but it, it's an interesting, again, it may be a naive way, also a naive way of uh, looking at the world and always thinking that we're all for the good all the time. Uh, but uh, the idea of transparency in general uh, seems uh, very reasonable. Okay. Uh, and then we have the Web 2.0. This is a concept that is important for us. Web 2.0 is the web that appeared right after the, the crash, NASDAQ crash of 2001, right? Uh, and, uh, and the companies that survived, when they looked at them, they noticed they had uh, something in common. They all used the internet in a way that was interactive and that allowed customers to become active participants of, uh, you know, whatever was happening there. You know, the, the companies that died in 2001 were companies that were still pushing the old idea of we we say you hear right this web 2.0 means we all say we all hear or whatever it's not broadcasting any longer it's it's building the dialogue as makina said in his uh, his 1995 paper right uh, so there is a lot that we can learn from this uh, uh, and and I would say that Web 2.0 is the technological expression of collective intelligence on the web. Some of the tools that I, I, I told you here that we'll be using, the forum, the, the wiki, uh, they're all 
uh, tools that, well, they were not born with uh, Web 2.0, but, but Web 2.0 was based on this kind of technology to make sure that the users become the generators of content, the generators of, uh, uh, of whatever is, is seen or happens on the web. Uh, then we have to discuss a little bit about uh, the motivation for crowd participation. Right? What makes people participate in, in a collective intelligence uh, project, mainly when the collective intelligence is the means and, not the, not the, and, and the crowd does not necessarily relate to the results. Right? The results are wished by someone the crowds are pushed to put their intellectual efforts or their muscles into achieving that result, but it's not a result that directly interests the crowds, so why would the crowds be involved? Or what could make them involved? Uh, so we'll discuss a little bit of motivation here, uh, because uh, it's, I mean, all those, all the, all the ideas about crowdsourcing and crowdfunding, crowd evaluation, crowd whatever, only, only uh, succeed if you find a way of making sure that people participate. Otherwise, uh, it, it doesn't happen. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll get a chance of talking about gambling and prediction markets. This is something that I've, I have a, a special interest on. I find, uh, I, I find that, for example, the stock market uh, could benefit a lot from uh, some collective intelligence research. Uh, well, I, I, I've always been, been quite sure that the stock market depends more on psychology and sociology than on economy. Right? Whatever happens at the stock market, if you see what happens to Bovespa here, and uh, it, it's it, when it moves up and down, it, it, it's difficult to say that that happened because of a, uh, let's say, a very technical reason. It usually happens based on emotional reasons or uh, reasons that, that have more to do with how the individuals perceive something than uh, with what is actually happening. So uh, I'm fascinated by, by that. and, and, and Prediction markets is, uh, allows us to, well, using collective intelligence to predict what happens in a market is a very interesting topic. I, I'm just not sure we will have, you've probably noticed that we have several weekends, uh, sorry, uh, long weekends uh, this semester, and, uh, and I think three of them affect us uh, on this course here. So I'm, I don't want to advertise this topic uh, that much because we may not be able to to get to it. But anyway, if anyone is interested, specifically interested in that topic, uh, I am happy to, to discuss uh, on an individual basis. Uh, as I said, we have to be critical about uh, uh, collective intelligence and, and, and its possibilities. We'll have to discuss here a little bit of, about the robustness of collective intelligence. Uh, and when I say, is it robust, for example, is a wiki a robust, robust proposition of collective intelligence. So I told you that it's it's very easy for someone to go there and, and write something that will make everyone else uh, uh, annoyed or disappointed or even deciding not to participate on that any longer, right? Uh, so uh, collective intelligence needs many times to provide people with freedom and expect responsibility. Uh, we don't know if we're going to have that. Uh, we'll discuss here a, a specifically uh, a project of collective intelligence in which a group of students decided to use collective intelligence to solve uh, a problem in, in, a, in a competition uh, where the, all, all, all the other um, competitors were trying to use more computer-related technologies. For example. Uh, they, they basically had to, to solve a puzzle Right? And, uh, and, uh, and all of the others were using uh, graphical and you know, uh, mathematical processes to try and, fi and fit the, the, the pieces, the little pieces of the, the puzzle. And this guy said, well, we, we can have a lot of humans 
trying to do that individually, and if we have thousands of them, we'll, we'll fix the, 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 the puzzle more quickly than whoever is trying to, to use more sophisticated methods. Uh, they were using that, they invited the crowds, but of course they were only thinking that those who would participate would be there to help them. But of course some of the competitors got into the thing and started messing up with the puzzle. So there's this discussion of uh, even when we're trying to do good by means of the use of collective intelligence, how strong are we with respect to sabotage to, to, to people that, for whatever reason, are either not interested in the results that we're proposing or people that are simply not interested in whatever our society proposes and, and goes against it. So we have to, to think of that because collective intelligence many times requires, I mean, if, if we want to empower people, we have to understand that, that we may be empowering uh, the bad guys as well, right? And so how we deal with that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll try and, and, and discuss a little bit of this new concept that is much less common in research but should be very strong in the future that is do we have collective intelligence or collective stupidity happening here okay well uh, I guess those were yeah here I have a few more links that I have included I hope that none of them is broken if you find anything that is broken you can you can tell me uh, so this is an overall picture of what this course is going to be about. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for now, any ideas. Yes. Go on. Oh, I, uh, I just want to ask if there are two topics that are hidden from us at uh, the bottom. Um, just as curiosity. Let me see. Well, I'm checking this as a student right now. Let me see. After robustness. After robustness, I, ah, this is not not available here. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, out of curiosity, I'll show you. It in uh, there's a lot of things that are probably hidden because let me just I have to change my. I, I'm I'm see, I, I usually use here the same view as you as students so that I see I see what you see, but there are things that are that are hidden either simply because they do not belong to your course, but it's something that, in my mind, I, 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 you know, it's something that I have to keep in mind. That, uh, so you, you'll see here, for example, right at the beginning, when, when I, what I see, you don't see, for example, this, oh, what's happening here, just a second. So you see that there may be other, you, you don't see these things here, for example. This is a, oh, this is a seminar that I did on, intelligence, uh, strategy, and in innovation. And I used uh, and allowed them to, to, to see our, our stuff here in the past. So it may be things like this uh, here. We have a, here in, at UTFPR, we also have an, uh, an specialization program, uh, how do we call it, uh, Curso de Especialização uh, on uh, data science. And they have a, a short module on collective intelligence. So there, I have here things that I had selected, which is part of what you you have. I mean, yours is much much broader than theirs. So you see, it's all hidden. Uh, there's a lot of little things here that show us hidden. But but you said two two full topics. Let's see what the full topics are. This is this is something. Remember when uh, this is interesting for you to see. Uh, one week before, or, well. Actually, the Friday before, classes were, were canceled here because of the pandemic. I think uh, the last day of February 2020 or something, I was teaching. Um, it was a, 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 I was teaching a class, and we were discussing the wisdom of crowds, right? Uh, and then, uh, I mean, I, I, we'll do something like that with you as well. But we were thinking about. Uh, Collectively, collectively trying to understand what was going to happen. I don't know what happened with this uh, Gremio against Inter here that they, well, and they said it was that the Gremio was going to win. Uh, 
they, I don't know why they were thinking that the, ex the stock exchange was going to go 10%. I, I don't remember what the questions were, but it's interesting that I asked them, well, you know that there is COVID in China uh, and that there is a risk that we will not have classes uh, or that the classes will be, be paralyzed here at UTFPR as well. How long do you think uh, that uh, classes will be, if, if they paralyze classes here, uh, when do you think that that will happen? They, they thought, they claimed that it would, they would paralyze it in, in two weeks from then. It actually happened the Monday, Monday after, this was Friday evening, right? It happened on Monday. So see, the wisdom of crowds was not that great here. And, uh, and I asked how long uh, it would take for people to forget about coronavirus. And they said six months to forget about it. So, See that see, you, you can see that even uh, you, you'll be that we're going to be very good at some. Uh, so there are things that we, 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 we do in a very unbiased way, but but we have to be unbiased. But at the same time, we have to have some knowledge. The fact is that at that stage, we did not have not no, knowledge about the pandemic. I mean, not no, no, no people alive had gone through a pandemic. I mean, the previous one had been a hundred years before, right? So there, there, there were a few people that were alive, but those, even those that were alive a hundred years old and more did not recall the, the previous pandemic, which happened when they were one or two years of age, right? So there was no one to, to say how, how, how this was going to go. Um, in fact, I, I yeah, uh, and, and, and so when, I mean, when we don't have any knowledge, it's not that our biases are going to be canceled. Or not, we don't have knowledge, right? So you don't ask people if they don't have knowledge about something. And, and people, when they don't have knowledge, they should refrain from, from giving their opinion. But notice, the emphasis here is everyone gave their opinion. Everyone thought that they were knowledgeable about the pandemic based on maybe what had happened in the swine flu a few years before, which in fact was only two weeks or so. Uh, and, and which we probably forgot six months later. That was the experience people had with it. But anyway, th this was something that was hidden here because I, I don't even remember the question, so I can't even, I mean, if, if I dig there, I can find it, but um, let me see if I find them. See, there's a lot of hidden stuff there, but those don't even show to you. I think to show that it's hidden, it has to be complete topic. Uh, I'll see. Uh, no. I don't see there's a complete topic, or, or maybe it is. I don't know. It's it's nothing. Can't find it. I, I don't know why that that one. Is, see, there's a lot of uh, hidden stuff here, but uh, it's right after what? Yeah, uh, robustness. Uh, and before the links. Give, give me the last thing that is written there before before the hidden. Uh, discussion of the papers. Uh, discussion. Of the papers we read for today. The ah, but the problem is that. But uh, the problem is that this is something that I probably say in, vi in various. So I'll, I'll just write robust, robustness here. Let's see. So it should be here below this item. See, I have two papers that are hidden. Another. Well, when you will see that our re the recordings of our class will always appear here as we too, right? And by the way, I only record. Uh, I don't record uh, the guys who are online, and I don't record, of course, I don't record you because the camera is showing <laughs> me, but I do record your voice, right? But again, this is going to be only for the group. I hope you don't mind. Um, so, where is that? It may be this on you know, group thinking, collective imbeciality, polarization and echo chambers. I think this is all shown for you, right? 
No, so, no. So maybe maybe that's it. But it's uh, uh, I mean these are things when I hide. I'm, there are times that I delete things from here. When I simply hide, it's because I want when I get to that topic, I want to uh, still uh, evaluate if that's something that is important for us to discuss or not. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions, guys? You who are remotely today? Again, uh, feel free. We, we we do today. I have uh, some 15 people online. And I have five people in the class. In this class here at UTFPR, uh, in the, the SEG Centro in Curitiba, I can fit some, another 10 people at least. So feel free, whoever is online, feel free for, if you want to come and when you want to come to, to class uh, face to face, feel free to come. There may be a day that we are unlucky and a lot more come and then uh, you will not be able to sit in front of a computer. Uh, but, uh, but I do think that it's important uh, that we recover that sense of university in which we met our colleagues, we could go uh, out for a, for a coffee in the, the, the break time or whatever. Uh, and uh, although this is very practical in the sense, uh, I mean, uh, what we're doing here is very practical in the sense that we, that we, that, that we can include people that are not in Curitiba or not even in Brazil, uh, at the same time, for those who are here, feel free to come whenever uh, you can or, or wish, right? Uh, of course, the, the, we're going to do this. Sometimes the students who are in the class will have the impression that I'm only talking to you because I'm looking at my screen. Other times you will think that I'm not talking to you because I'm looking at them. Uh, but this is uh, how it will have to go. It's managing the two groups at the same time. Hopefully, everyone uh, will be able to, to benefit from, from this. Any, any questions from you guys? Is, 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 is the technology working fine? Uh, just want to, I'm, I'm curious about the quality of the, the resolution of, of my uh, slides, but you can always even use whatever I, I'm showing you here. Uh, it, it, it's never going to be something that you have to be reading, right? It's more so that you know what I'm talking about. You have, the, if, if, even if you're online, you have your uh, access to your own Moodle there. You see what, what I clicked, what I'm doing. And you can uh, do it in, in your own screen. I think that, that should not be a problem. I prefer to have this possibility of switching from, let's say, from this screen to this screen without uh, without having to, sorry, with, with, without having to to do a, uh, you know, to, to share to share my screen and, to, and then to stop sharing because this gives me some makes things faster for me and I, I can switch among different things more quickly. Uh, but uh, again, if you have any troubles with that, just tell me. Uh, well, well, we'll use the WhatsApp uh, very consciously. It's, it's not for us to say good morning, good afternoon, or, or goodbye to, 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 to our classmates. Uh, but whenever you find something that is interesting, a topic that you, you know, you read something that you thought that relates to this and you, you think that will interest uh, your colleagues, feel free to include there the link and, 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 and uh, I, I will make sure that uh, uh, if, if it's really uh, good for us that I include in our material here. Uh, the, there, there's a lot of the material that I have that was not originally selected by me. Uh, other people studying collective intelligence here in Brazil and elsewhere has helped. Uh, and, and also some of my students, uh, many times you, you bring to my attention papers or, or topics that we have to study. Again, you have to learn but I want to, to keep learning, and I, and I learn a lot from you, and mainly in a collective intelligence class. If we cannot do that, uh, where else would we be able to, right? So um, we'll, we'll stop here today. We don't have the second half of the, the, the class today, because again, from, from 10.20 to midday, the Curitiba time, uh, that would be the time that we would, would be involved in, in our discussions in in a forum link that I will provide to you. Uh, we don't have that today because we haven't read anything yet. And again, that would be only, we would only have our biases without having the knowledge, right? From next week on, we hopefully, hopefully all have some knowledge that we gain from the reading. And then we sort of start trying to kill the biases by checking the perceptions that our, our colleagues also had of those papers. Uh, one very interesting thing that happens about any paper or any, any book or whatever that we read is we as readers 
become the writers of our own version of that book, our own version of understanding of that book, right? We, I mean, the author, the author of a, a book is a dictator. The, the book, uh, that, that's probably why it's written on paper and not on online so that others can correct or fix or change, right? Uh, a, 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 a book or a, a paper has even the, the uh, a logic that it has to be read top down most of the times, right? So the guy who, who wrote that says, well, I wrote it this way and, and I don't want you to change it. But it's impossible for us not to change because we read that book or that paper with all the background that we already have that makes us understand it differently to others. And this is where I think that we have, uh, I, I, well, there's two reasons why we should have, uh, why I prefer, pre prefer to have it in, in, in these two sessions. First part, more like lecture-like, and the second, we relax it down and, and, and start discussing uh, online. Uh, the first is, uh, I would not be able to, to be talking to you for four hours. Uh, well, you, you would die probably of uh, boredom there. Uh, and, uh, and, and besides, uh, even if you didn't die, uh, I mean, after two hours as we did, to, I think this is the limit, right? After this, we have to, to think a little slowly, to, to think of different things. But the, the second reason is, as each of us becomes the author of our own understanding of a paper that we read, it's good that when we start discussing, we expose our understanding to others and others start, start, start thinking, gee, I had, not, I, I had not thought of that. Uh, or, gee, this guy is saying that the, the author said this, I didn't even notice. Because sometimes when I, when I told you that we, all, we are all fake news propellers, uh, it means when, when we read something and we agree with that, that gets stuck to our mind and, and, and that reinforces what we think. When we read something that we don't agree much with, we sort of push that under the carpet, under the, the rug. Uh, uh, I don't know if the, the, those who do not speak Portuguese would understand if, what, what I just said, but I say so you, you push the dust under the rug means you hide, even unconsciously, that that you do not agree with. I uh, think we do that all the time when we're writing our, our uh, literature reviews in our studies, right? We, f we try to find authors that say something that we agree with. And when we see something that we don't agree with, we say, oh, rubbish. I'm not going to cite this guy. So we only cite those that think the same way as we do, say, think the same ideas that we do. It's, it's fake news in science. Uh, you know, we're, we're all trying to impose our own understandings of the world with, without, of course, if we do that seriously, instead of doing a, a, a simple literature review, we, we, we try to do it in a way, in a more systematic way, in, 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 in which we, we, we put all, all our own authors to debate among themselves and, 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 and we, we try to get where there is, where they agree and also where they disagree uh, before we, we simply agree with one of them, right? Uh, so we'll try to do that in our second part of the class where we will be discussing the, the topics. We will try and see where we agree with our colleagues, where we disagree, where we notice something that was important, where, uh, I, for example, one, one question that I will always ask you is, what impressed you the most on the text you, you just read? So be, be prepared for that, right? When you're reading, already, as soon as you finish reading, write down, well, this paper, what I liked the most or what I didn't like the most, it could be what you hated the most, was whatever. Because when we, we show that to our colleagues later, we'll notice that they didn't even pay attention to that because they were not prepared to, to pay attention to that, right? Let's build collective intelligence by building our awareness of the different interpretations that we make, even of a written text that was written using the precise same words that were read by everyone. And that still leads to different perceptions. Okay? So, uh, I see you next week. If you have any troubles, if anyone, uh, uh, well, uh, now we don't, uh, if, we, if anyone didn't get uh, that email from me, I, I don't think it, it matters any longer. Of course, I will check uh, there, are, there are a few students, I think there are some four or five students who are not here, which probably didn't receive the, the email or the, the invitation. Uh, but for all of you who are here, you already know where to be on, on, on Friday mornings, uh, either the link or the classroom, CB 2004, here at uh, UTFPR 
uh, sede centro em Curitiba. Uh, you already know where Moodle is. You know the access code for, for Moodle. I think uh, for this class it's 666666. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully we are right to go. It's just a matter of sitting down over the weekend and spending those many hours uh, reading what we have to discuss next week. Okay? So that's it. See you guys. Thank you.